and we are merely actors and actresses moving along. I feel like performance is something that it's such a multifaceted word. It can apply to your performance on a job, your performance on a stage, your performance in your relationships. There are athletic performance. There's so many ways that we apply this word. And I feel like it almost has a bad rep where it's as though if we're performing, it's a problem. If I can tell that you're showboating and trying to get attention, then it becomes a bad thing, even though the performance may spawn from a genuine space. There's a place of practice, a place of comfort, a place of expression. And I guess it's just a challenge. What is wrong with performance? And I ask this as someone who likes the idea of how when someone's a really good actor and they're in a movie or on stage and you are rooting for them, you can feel their pain and you're in the thick of it and it feels like it's genuine. It's as though reality and this world that they're creating have collided and now we're just I don't know, enchanted, enraptured, just captivated by how magical this performance is. Why is it such a problem when we perform in our regular lives, when we acknowledge that we're seeking something and we're trying to do something either for a result, a feeling, a person, a, their pleasure, our pleasure, whoever, why is performance so wonky? I'm Latia, and I feel like performance gets a bad rep. Besides the fact that it kind of is extended between performance reviews at work and performance on a stage, I feel like I love dance, and I've always loved dancing. It's been something that's really fun for me, and there are times where I remember I was younger, especially after dance classes. So two things that really stick out for me are isolations and just silly dances that I would do for my family. So I like isolations because it's like when you're just moving your neck only and your head moves or your shoulders only move or your rib cage. Rib cage isolations are super fun because they're a little bit awkward. And I also learned how to like roll my belly and I can do it in reverse. So I can like roll it down and then undulate it back up. I always love doing that. And isolations are cool because it's like, you are very intentionally focusing on one part of your body and keeping everything else still. The amount of attention, effort, and energy that goes into that, I just love it. And then besides that, I would just do silly dances and I like opposites being paired. So I remember I would like move my legs really fast and then I would like slowly like have my arms running and just like I don't know skirting around our kitchen and like making my family laugh and just having fun with it and a lot of the times like my family like if I were dancing freely would tell me let's see don't dance in public you're gonna hit people you're gonna get into fights it's gonna be a mess and part of me is like taking that on where I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to be careful when I dance in public. I can only keep it like, mm mm, sexy cute and can't be like, hey, wild woman, which is part of why ecstatic dance communities are not my jam. Not necessarily because like, they're just not yet. I'm not called to do that. They just don't sound like fun. But I do love dance. I used to want to be a dancer. And I remember seeing one of Trey Song's concerts and the backup dancers were doing like ballet style moves and it's just like, oh, loving it. Especially like flexibility and the strength. And ballet is just my jam because it's something where it's very structured and poised and you can get a group of people to look very similar. Whereas like when people are dancing more like hip hop, there's so much self-expression and energy that goes into it. It's just like, oh, personality. You want me to dance with personality? Oh, what is this? And I also feel like um, recently I read that women feel like they have to perform in the bedroom. 
And that's where anxiety comes in because it becomes performance anxiety instead of being present to the moment and enjoying the partner and the sacred space that is sex. And I found that fascinating because I guess there's multiple ways of looking at it. If you're performing to what you think your partner would like, then I can see why it's difficult because you're not a mind reader. He's most like he or she is likely not to tell you what they want or expect. And we can think the wrong things are what we're being measured on. So when I have sex, um, I think it's a treat for my partner. I'm like, you're welcome. It's a blessing to be in my pleasant presence. <laughs> and I'm I'm very comfortable in my skin. I really like my body. So I'm like, my body's not an issue. Um, I don't really have very many issues when it comes to being in a sexual space. I like being naked. I like showing off my body. I like attention. So for me, sex isn't about performing for my partner's pleasure because I know my partner is likely to get off. I am really good at pleasing other people and taking care of their needs and having fun. And a lot of it comes from the fact that I use their bodies to please myself. So I like to touch my partner in a way that turns me on. So when I'm turned on and I'm excited and I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Or they touch me and they get me into that space and then I just wanna share this turned on excited feeling with them. Then it just becomes an expression of like, how turned on can we get? How in the headspace and in the moment and present can we be? And then it's a different experience from me trying to read their mind or make them happy or do what they want. It's just like, no, they'll either tell me what they want. They'll tell me if it's good or not. Like, yes, more, nah, not that. And it, it's about like communication, a space where we can communicate and know that we're getting what we want or need or like to do. So for me, I'm very comfortable in a sexual space. And it, it kind of took time to do that, but like I've had my journey but now I'm in a space where it's like, if I want to have sex with you, I'm willing to have sex with you. If I don't want to have sex with you, I am not going to have sex with you. If I am willing to let you go down on me, you're welcome to go down on me. And if I don't want you to, you're not going to. And it just depends on the person and the relationship. Like everything is so unique and individual. It's hard to have like blanket rules where it's like, okay, must be this tall to ride this ride look like this blah 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 it's like it's more the quality of the connection and how we relate to one another so there are people that like i really enjoy spending time with and we have a lot of fun and we're never gonna do it and then there are people where i have a lot of it with and we may not develop a real relationship out of it as in like being boyfriend and girlfriend or getting married and I'm not trying to have sex with them to get to that space. It is just a fun moment and really connecting and being present with another person because it's like, as a woman, I am a portal to the divine and I understand that I'm a portal to the divine and my pleasure is treasure. I am sacred and divine. And it's like, I don't, even know how to explain it but when I approach sex from the space of let's just have fun let's enjoy the moment let's be present it's a very different space from trying to be like what do you need what do you want how can I be there for you I am not a servant to anyone else's pleasure if anything I am about my pleasure first and knowing that I'm going to be taken care of so those guys who are willing to like play with me first or start by making sure I'm satisfied and then we go into other things, it's great. Absolutely amazing. I have partners where they just please me to like, whoa, mind blown, did not know that could happen. And then when we move forward into something else, it's just like, I'm putty. I know I'm divine and great and like you are in control. Thank you. Like, I don't have to worry. So is it bad to just be inspired and present in the moment and authentic with our feelings? Where does the anxiety come in? And I guess it's because I don't relate to having that experience 
where like if anything I'm just like I don't want to wake your neighbors that's my main thing like I'm not gonna be loud and just like obnoxious I don't want to do that but to just enjoy the moment and really bring my best self and have fun and connect and create a beautiful moment and lots of fun other stuff because I guess I'm just in that really lucky group of people where like I hear um, not all women orgasm and then not all women like most women have clitoral orgasms I get those and then there's like a small percentage of women who can orgasm from penetration I'm one of those so I get to be in a space where it's like I never sought it it was just like I was with someone and it happened and then now it can happen like fairly often with different partners that I have and so like there are different things about the sexual space that I'm just not super familiar with and don't understand and it's not bad it's just how it is like I wear guys a lot and it's great Thank you for watching. Please share this with someone you think may find it interesting. Like, dislike, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.